This is John Stark with Stark Avionics and I'm going to show you how to set up a Stratus ESG or Stratus ESGI. So the first thing you're going to do before you even get into the actual programming is go to a website and the website's an FAA website and you're going to need to get some information from it. So if you have to pause it here then go ahead and do that but this is the um, address that you're going to go to. And that, when you plug it into your web browser, is gonna bring you to a page that looks like this. And it's gonna have a spot where you can put in your end number and hit submit. That's gonna take you to a page that looks like this. Now on this page right here, you're gonna see where I've got highlighted the mode S code. It's a 16 hex and then it's got a number in it. That number is what you're gonna need. So let's <clears throat> go ahead and I guess pause now and go get that number. And once you've got the number, come back and hit play. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and power this off. We were in the regular mode. We're gonna hold the function button in while powering it on. And that's gonna put us in the setup mode. And look at that. That's the first thing it asks you for is that hex code that you just got. Now yours is gonna be blank. This just happens to be my airplane and what I have in it. You're gonna get it off of that website. You're gonna hit the enter button and it's gonna come alive. And if it was um, a B was the first one, then you'd hit like the one, you see the one and the B there, you'd hit that and just keep hitting it until you see B. And you're gonna keep doing that. You're gonna move this arrow over to the next one. <clears throat> then you're gonna do this and then you go to the next one until you're completely done. Okay, once you're done, you hit enter now you've got this address locked in there. That's your address. <clears throat> the next thing for you to do, hit the right button, go to the next page. VFR squawk code, yeah, of course, we're gonna leave that to 1200 here in the United States. Next one is your registration number. Now that's where you're gonna put the N number in. So you're gonna hit enter. Always put N, don't forget N, people do that. And that will come up as an error. You will not uh, pass ADSB out. So you're gonna hit the five button until you see N and then from there, you're just gonna put in whatever your end number is. All right, so let's just say your end number was one, two, three, four, five. You get the idea. If it happens to be a um, letter, just go to the number and keep hitting the number until it goes over to the letter that you want. For example, if it was this, you, you had a P or a Q or an R. So you hit enter, your registration's in there, you're good to go there. Next thing, airspeed category. Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. Most of you guys are gonna be in 75 to 100 or 150 to 300. Those are your two categories. Most of you are gonna actually, I would say most of them are gonna redline somewhere in this neighborhood. But if you have a little bit slower airplane, you're gonna be here. You hit enter, that's all there is to that page. Next one, remember I'm hitting the right-hand arrow to go to the next page. <clears throat> Category, they are all going to be the same. They're going to be, I hit the end number to make it, or I'm sorry, the enter to make it flash, and you're gonna hit light. Let's face it, you guys are all gonna be 15.5 or, or lower. Hit enter, you're done with that page. Length, okay, aircraft length, you're always gonna be, remember this is in meters, 15 meters, it's not 15 feet, 15 meters. So let's assume that you're 15 meters, hit enter, <clears throat> go to the next width. Let's assume that you're all gonna be 23 meters or less. Hit enter, go to the next page. Altitudes, feet, yes, I'm sure you don't want it reading in meters. Um, squat switch, well, if you have one, then of course you'd go ahead and hit enter and you'd turn in whether you want it low on the ground or um, low and airborne. Most of us are gonna have none. Next one is parallel. Okay, well, if you're not in avionics, you don't really understand altitude source parallel. Altitude source comes from your altitude encoder, unless of course you have an encoding altimeter or an EFIS system, but you're gonna have altitude coming in from somewhere. Parallel is what they call gray code or gilliam code. It's nine wires and they're grounded in different sequences to equal certain altitudes. If you're not using the nine wire interface, which is called gilliam or gray code or parallel, I don't know why we have to rename everything five different ways in avionics, but we do. You would go ahead and hit enter if it's a serial data, and then you would just put whatever type of serial data that you have. And they've got several different formats. 
you'll have to check with your um, altitude encoder company to see what format that is. All right, so next one, ambient light sensor you can leave alone, backlight you can leave alone, backlight you can leave alone, you can just keep going through theirs. Offset, you can just leave unknown if you want. Basically what they're doing here, they're gonna give you a lat and the next page is long. And they're actually wanting to know where on the airplane the antenna is located. So if it's a little bit forward of dead center of the aircraft, then you would change this. And you would say, oh no, it's two meters to the left or two meters to the right or whatever else. Same thing with this right here. It's gonna say it's two meters forward or behind it. Honestly, you can leave it. It's gonna give you an inaccuracy of a few feet, but if you feel like you need to go ahead and change that, you go ahead and change that. You're gonna to wanna to change this. ADS-B and capability. You're gonna definitely wanna change this and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put both. The reason you wanna do that is if you have a portal, portable device that can do UAT or 1090 ES or both of them, and most of them are both um, dual receivers, you want this. If you don't engage this, you will not get the full traffic picture on your portables. Now this doesn't actually do ADS-B in, but it does send out, because this is an out unit, ADS-B out, it does send a packet to the FA saying, hey, I've also got an in box somewhere. It doesn't matter what model it is, whether it's Garmin or maybe something like this right here, which is um, uh, Stratus's version. Trust me, you just want to go ahead and put uh, UAT um, and uh, 1090ES as active. Uh, you do not need to touch this at all, this little um, service provider thing. <clears throat> Rollovers, you don't need to touch that. And I think you're done. These are all just, uh, the rest of the stuff here are just um, giving you some information. Now we're all about, all the way back to the front. It's giving you some information if you ever needed to troubleshoot. Um, you'll probably never use that. That was it. It should take you all of about five minutes at most to uh, program this. If you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email. Thanks. Bye.